Hi, this is Lou, and today's video is going to be a watercolour one. And I've been doing lots of practice behind the scenes. So I've been filling pages with patterns like this and stripes, and then kind of slightly more complicated ones like these. And the reason that I've been doing these is because I've been practicing. I am planning a series of watercolour basics. So using patterns, uh, teaching you watercolour techniques that you can use whether you're a beginner or you're a little bit more advanced. I'm going to um, try and demystify some of the stuff around um, colour mixing. I'm going to talk a little bit about supplies, uh, but also about how to get different, different effects with your watercolours. And for each technique that I show you, I'm going to be using patterns to demonstrate those techniques. So there'll be a little exercise where you can create a whole page full of different patterns using the techniques that I'm going to show you. So if you want to follow along with that series, I'm going to be doing it in April and I will uh, let you know the dates of uh, what's coming and there'll be a little bit of a, not a syllabus, that's a bit too grand, but like <laughs> an idea of what things I'm covering in which, in which sections, in which weeks. Um, in the run up to that, I'm going to have a few weeks break from YouTube. That's going to give me a chance to really prepare some good quality content for you. Uh, but also I've got a couple of other projects that I'm working on on the side and they just needed a little bit more headspace. So I'm taking a few weeks out to concentrate on those. And then I'm going to come back with this watercolour series in April. So today I thought I'd film one of my practice sessions where I create a whole page of watercolour patterns and I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing. So for my colours I'm using Windsor Violet. This is um, a Windsor and Newton palette and that's what they call the purple in the palette. But yeah, Deoxazine purple is a very similar kind of colour. I'm using this um, kind of creamy colour which is Buff Titanium. I'm going to use alizarin crimson, which is a nice bright pinky red. And I'm using raw sienna, which is a warm yellow. I'm going to use a little bit of a bright red. So this is Windsor red, but again, cadmium red is a similar kind of color. It's more of an orangey red. And then I'm going to sample all of these colors so you can see what they look like. So that's the red. That's the raw sienna, alizarin crimson, the winter violet, and the buff titanium. So that's my palette. Now the colours I'm going to be using, but I'm rarely going to be using any of them neat. I'm going to mix them up. So for my painting today, all I'm going to do is use some uh, simple shapes and I'm going to repeat them in rows down the page. So let's start at the top and then move down. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of a border around the edge and I'm just going to do that by eye. If you wanted to, if you wanted to be really precise, you could use a little bit of tape to mask the edges off. Yeah, if you don't have a colour like this, you can use a brown and then dilute it. If you've got a white, you can mix it with some white and then you'll get a similar kind of look. So I'm just going to start by mixing a little bit of pink into this creamy colour, get a nice peach kind of cut tone and I'm going to start and I'm going to draw circles to start with. So get the outside in and then I want to fill the centre before the outside dries. And now I can take the tip of my brush and any areas I want to neaten up, anything that looks a bit patchy, I can put that in. And then you can even drop in some little bits of other colour, so I can drop in a little bit of that pink around the edge. And then I'm going to do the one next to it and start here. And then I want them to touch. I want them to maybe bleed a little bit into one another. Okay. 
and then again I can tidy up any edges that I think need neatening up. And I can add in some little bits of a deeper colour if I want to. And as long as the paint's still wet, you can keep moving it around. Let's go for a third one. I'm adding in more of a pinky tone into the centre of that one. And then I'm going to do the fourth one. Okay, now it's time to move on to the next row. So for this I want a slightly different colour and I'm going to use this purple, but on its own it's quite intense. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of that warm yellow into it. Now I'll just tone it down slightly and add a little bit more water because it is quite pigmented that colour. And then I'm going to draw like a bar, like a rectangle, all the way along. And again, I'm getting the basic shape in, and then I can go in and neaten it up if I want to. And what I can also do is add a little bit more pigment into areas that are still a bit wet. Just create a, a look that isn't quite so uniform. And while this is still a little bit damp, I'm going to draw in some triangles and I'm going to allow them to bleed into the purple. I'm going to have to do two smaller ones on the end to make them fit in. But that's okay. If everything looks regular, it looks a bit boring. For my next row, I want to use some yellow. And for this, I'm going to do some half circles. Just trying to decide which way I want them. And I think I'll have them with a straight edge along here, like that. And then the curved edge down. I'm 
Let's put in the next one and go to there. Just a little bit of red into that bottom edge and along here. I'm mixing a little bit more yellow into this purple and the more you go the more kind of brown it looks and again I'm going to do some more triangles actually shall I do some diamonds so like on their side looks yes like diamonds so, so just a square, but skewed at a funny angle. I'm going to draw another line along here. I'm trying to touch the bottoms of the diamonds, but if you have to go a long way out of your way, then it's not worth it. Just drop in a little bit of that purple along the bottom of there. See that spread out. So next I'm going back to the pink and I'm going to do a series of half circles but this time I'm going to make them more like like U-shaped so they've got a, a gap in the middle and again I'm touching the bottom of this bar and allowing the colours to bleed if and where they want to. Now another series of triangles might make this one a little bit bigger than last time. So we're nearly there. I think we need another series of circles this time. I think I should make them sort of pink. No, I think we need more yellow in this.
I'm really tempted to meeting that up and join it up with that one, but I'm going to leave it because I like, yeah, the overall picture will benefit from a few little bits that don't quite make sense. And I have to remember that as I'm going along. So we need another like rectangular bar along here. And I think that's a bit too similar to the colour before it, so I'm going to drop in quite a bit of pink while it's still wet along that top edge and it will just give it a bit more distinction. That's better. And we can finish with a little bit of purple and I'm going to do half circles but I'm doing them the other way up. So this is where we've got to so far. Um, so I've put big patterns in, in stripes, all the way down the page. So now I'm going to go in and add a layer of detail into each of those. The first thing I'm going to do is that I think these ones with the triangles on, there's a fair bit of white space around here. So I think I'm going to put in a layer of triangles on the top that kind of mirror the ones on the bottom. So I have moved on to a slightly smaller brush for doing my detail layer. Um, it's still a round brush, it's a size 4, um, and it comes to a nice point so you can get into the corners quite nicely. Oh, I'm going to turn the paper around so I don't get my hand in the wet bit that I've just painted. And that looks a bit too similar to the layer before. So I'm just going to dab that off. And let's see. Let's. Make it more of this purpley brown. Right. Let's neaten that edge up.
So thanks so much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you do want to follow along with me and do some of those watercolour exercises that I'm going to be posting, then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. If you make one of these or anything inspired by my work, then I love to see it. So you can always post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. I love to see the work that you've made and I get very excited when I see somebody's followed one of my tutorials. So thank you very much for sharing those. So I do have a brief video coming up on Wednesday. It'll be a little short one. Again, it's painting, but this time with gouache. And, uh, and then after that, there won't be any videos for a few weeks until I come back with that watercolour course. So I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, thanks very much for watching and bye-bye.